Alright Coach Pack, uh, you guys are, uh, variety is the spice of life by the way. And there's, there's a lot of variety here when I come here. I'm seeing kids that are, you got a guy that's a double Fargo All-American third third, and then I see a little, I think a five or six year old. Yeah, there's a couple, there's a couple six or seven year olds. Yeah, that, so, it's so, intensive camp, man. It, it's crazy, it, it but, but when we talk about variety, you guys got all levels of wrestlers, learners, athletes. Females can come to the camp. Yep. I mean, you guys have had you. You've got quite the plethora of, of kids right. here learning this week. Um, and, and there's camps overlapping. Or I don't know right. how you keep it organized. You're actually, you know what? You're a pretty organized guy. You're constantly meeting with your guys. You and your wife are on the phone. I think about thirty-seven thousand times a day. Yes, so but the, the lines of communication are open. Right. So it's pretty impressive for you. It, you do a great job of keeping everybody in line, safe, which is the most important right, thing. Right, absolutely. And then they're having a good time and they're learning. You know, I think that those things right there, and then they're getting basic nourishment, you know, and roof over their head. But the little kids, I can tell you, I've worked the Burnett camp system for, uh, geez, I was there this year. This is my 17th year doing theirs, mm -hmm. right? I can tell you that every week or every two week stretch, I knew there was little kids coming in. I had to, like, Find a new outlet, or like I, you know, because it, it's it's it gets frustrating. It does, man. I'm it not an elementary education guy. That's hard. How do you guys do such a night? You do a great job of managing the young kids. How do you do that? How is this balance? How do you do it? You know, I, I, I love I love our little guys because I think that uh, the one thing, like I said earlier, you know, I think that we don't, as as a country as a whole that we don't try to get to these kids young and teach them different things. And it's definitely not my job to be their parent or anything, but it's definitely my job to try to help promote the sport of wrestling and help them get better in it. So I think that uh, by having that vision and, and wanting to develop personal relationships with these kids, that they come here, they, they see we're going to crush them in the wrestling room, and we're going we're to push them. I don't care if you're 6 or 16, you're going to... You know, you're going to get pushed. It's the intensive camp. But I think at the same time, they realize that we have a, a real a real, a, a, a real love for what we do and the kids, too. I mean, we really care about these kids. We watch them and we treat them like they're our own. And, um, you know, parents feel, I mean, look, I mean, how many parents do you know that would leave a seven-year-old for 12 days? There's probably, there's probably eight or nine of them here in with high school kids. And uh, I think that trust is what really helps me stay organized and, and to know that those parents trust me with the most viable thing on earth. The most viable thing on earth to a parent is their children. And they trust me that much that they would leave them here for me to care for. So I take it really serious. So I make sure I know where they're at. I make sure I know where they're doing. I make sure I'm providing them an experience outside of just wrestling. You know playing volleyball, playing games, uh, you know, and have that experience that is beyond just wrestling. So they love wrestling. I want them to love wrestling. Best way to get a little kid to love wrestling is to find other things that they can do in combination with wrestling. That yes. That make them love it. So when I look at that, we're talking about, uh, uh, two th not two things, uh, multiple things that really impressed me. We went out for activity night the other night and they were lined up. They were lined up like soldiers. And you're a Marine, you're next Marine. Oh, yeah. So you know, you obviously enjoy that. I thought that was like, you know, that 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 shows that they know what's up. Yep. They know their regiment, they're respectful, they're they're ready, they want to get the activities going, they want to get some go juice out there. Other thing I saw, the tumbling that the legends of gold kids could do. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the the hat back handsprings yeah. and the flips, and that was impressive too. Yeah, we, we, we actually spend we spend some time during our warm-ups teaching them how to do those things uh, just to help develop their athleticism. And I think that the biggest thing I'm looking at a, a Russian, an old Soviet jacket, is they're doing their, their system is a, a similar to yours. It's, hey, let's make games out of it. Let's make them love the sport as opposed to, we got to get 100 matches. You got to win Tulsa and kick off. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. Right. But, you know, sometimes... If it's something you're doing for a living, you have to subscribe yeah, to that absolutely. a little bit. But I think that making a game is making it fun are a huge part of it. You no, know, don't, don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, we work hard. I mean, hard. And those kids still come out of the room 
drenching sweat at seven years old, going, oh, I almost heard they cry. And then they look around and they're going, oh, dude, it's time to go play soccer. It's time to, it's time to go play volleyball. Hey, we get to do a water balloon fight tonight. You know, it's those things. You couldn't have a water balloon fight on with seven-year-olds at University of Minnesota, Iowa, Oklahoma, none of that stuff. And that's not a knock to me because I love all those coaches. I'm just saying the system is built differently to provide a different service for kids. Looking at bringing the little kids in, keeping costs low. We've talked about that already. Right. You know, you said something. Somebody called you. It was kind of a dig on you. And you it said was. somebody called you the, the Walmart of wrestling. Yeah, they call me the Walmart of wrestling. The guys that run the bigger clubs. And, um, you know, and I, and I laugh. But it isn't cookie cutter when you come here. It's a very unique, individualized experience with a lot of coaches, and the, the athlete to coach ratio is low. Yeah, that's great. And that's great. But the other thing is, you're making it affordable for people in the Midwest. Right. But you know, we want to start getting those West Coast people, those East Coast yeah. people, the Southeast people. That's kind of the goal when we come here, and we want to promote the promote the sport. Right. Like you yeah. keep talking about that. But um, keeping the cost low. You know, yeah. kind of kind of tell me how important that is to you as a nonprofit guy. To keep costs low and letting younger, you know, ten and under kids come in. Well, I mean, I, I think that first of all, anytime somebody, especially in today's world, you know, money's valuable to people. And one of the things that we wanted to do is make it economically affordable. I mean, I grew up in a single family home after my mom and dad were divorced, and I didn't have money. I, I couldn't go to wrestling camps. I couldn't do this stuff. I didn't have the money. I want to be able to provide a service to people that allow everybody the opportunity to come here, not just because uh, they have enough money to be here, but because they want to be here. And, you know, we, we there's a process. We, we, get, we gave $15,000 in scholarships, and we say, hey, you have to write a letter. So the kid has to write the letter. Then a parent has to write a letter of support, and then they have to go get a coach or a teacher to also write a letter of support. So, I mean, and we're here to help kids, and we keep the cost low. Like I told you, you know, our LOG guys have been here. They come back and help. You've met them. Jeez, you've met a ton of them this weekend. And we had parents volunteer. We had a whole parent bring an entire meal tonight. They said, hey, you know, you could save some money this week. Not order part of an entire meal for 107 kids. I mean, that's not happening anywhere but here.